to the world the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let all hearts him sing him room. In heaven and nature sing. In heaven and nature sing. In heaven, heaven and nature sing. Today we will be looking at limits. So we changed the background to a grid in order to help with drawing the graph. So, what are we doing? Well, I should have done this a long time ago. Oh my God! And but today we will be reviewing what a limit is. So, first, let's see what is a limit really. Well, let's say that you have a point where something is undefined, like at this point, which is minus eleven comma minus seven or is it really minus seven because it's undefined but if we take something really close like over here we'll find it to be minus eleven comma nine point nine nine <coughs> or rather um six point nine nine however so you get farther and farther, but as the y value gets closer, you start to get this estimate of what it can could be. So for example, let's say you're at this point over here, which is minus 20, comma 10. And so now you're over here. And so your y value is 10. But how can you predict what the y value is going to be over here? So, instead, you go one more down the path. And suddenly, you have a point over here, which is at negative 17, comma 9. Now you've gotten closer somewhat, but you're still not close enough. What about here? This is negative 14, comma 8. but not close enough. This would be, and so actually, this is descending and descending. I just realized this would actually be 7.01 or something. So eight, and so this should be 7.5. So as we get closer and closer to the X value of negative 11, then the Y value gets closer and closer to seven. So, what do we say? Well, even though if we take f of negative 11, it's going to be undefined, the limit of f of f is x approaches negative 11 will be equal to 7. So, this is what a limit is. But that's just a two-sided limit. Get ready for some fun. So, what about this point right over here? Or rather, two points. You have this one point, which is, um, let's see, where, where is it? Five, um, negative five comma five. Then you have this point over here, which is at negative five comma negative two. Okay. So, this is what we have so far, so minus 5, comma 5, minus 5, comma minus 2. But we have two points now. Think of this as a teleporter. So it teleports you. This teleports you over here. And once you go back here, it takes you back over here. Poof! It's kind of like the teleporter we used to get to the forest in those uh, projectile motion videos. Anyway... What do we do over here? Well, we realize that as we get closer and closer from the right, then, as we get closer and closer from the right, then we get the answer negative 2. That's what it should be approaching. But when we approach closer and closer from the left, we get the answer negative 5. Right? So, or oh, well, actually rather five, positive 5. This should actually be on death. So over here, 
is minus 4.9 comma say maybe um okay uh, let's say it's minus 4.9 you have positive 4.9 say and so that's right next to 5 comma under minus 5 comma undefined that should actually be so let's say you have this point that is minus hmm, 5.1 comma hmm, 4.9 gets closer and closer to minus 5 comma 5 but from this side gets closer and closer to minus 5 minus 2 so you have two limits the one over here you get is and the limit is x approaches the limit is x approaches negative five should be equal to, oh goodness I didn't write of x should be equal to five like what we see over here but when we look in the other direction we get the conclusion that as x approaches negative five f of x should approach two that's quite strange so what do we use to what do we use to break these two up, differentiate them from one another? Well, the one on the left we get, we just put a handy minus over there. The one on the left over here, we just put a minus, we put a plus on the one that's on the right. So if we're approaching here towards the right and from the left, so if we are approaching to in the right direction, then we put a negative over here but if we're approaching in the left direction then we get the positive sign that's what we use and what are these types of things called they're called one-sided limits because they are not the same on both sides they're only they only apply to one side and so now, let's look at our final scale anomaly over here. Around the number four, these two guys seem to never be able to hit it. It's kind of like when you take, uh, that, uh, it's kind of like a fire. You uh, get closer and closer, but you are not going to touch it. Or kind of like the slap paradox that we did in the Bronx. Wink, wink. That's where Bronx, wink, wink. Where, if you have a man, presumably the guy who asked that question, um, so he looks kind of like this. His name starts with an R and ends with an H. And so, if we took this deranged looking man and had a hand that uh, had the distance between it and his face every single time. So, boom, now it's twice as close. Boom, now it's twice as close again. Boom, now it's twice as close. But every single time, it keeps getting less and less closer. So, it will never touch this guy's face. It's unfortunate. And so, um, that's a race this deranged man from the scene and now we're going to look at the same thing over here now the vertical asymptote is where these guys are headed but will never go so the vertical asymptote that guy can draw it using this line over here so it won't be much visible at first it won't be very visible at first but I promise that it will get more visible. Mm, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. What the? I did not like that sound. But there's the vertical asymptote. Now I'm gonna change its color because it looks real. Oh goodness! Oh yeah, okay. So this is the vertical asymptote, and as you can see, it's on four. So they will get closer and closer to this asymptote continually, but they will never, ever touch it. Ignore that. That's just an inaccuracy because my hands are screwed up. 
So, what what is the limit when? What is the limit? Of, oh goodness! So say, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches four? That, my friend, is undefined, and it's undefined on both sides. And so, even if you get closer and closer to it, you will never be there, because we realize that the only because we realize that this cannot intersect with the vertical asymptote. If it will intersect somewhere, that somewhere will likely be infinity, and infinity is not a number, is it now? And so, now this is the definition of a limit. Ignore that over there. And so. Now, what is the limit of a very special kind of case? A kind of case I would like to call a composite function. F of g of x. So let's say that the limit of g of x as x approaches this constant c is this random number. Roulette wheel for letters. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Ding, ding, ding. A. So. We get a over here, and so now the limit of f of g of x, f of g of x is the limit as x approaches to c of f of g of x will be equal to this limit applies in the interior. So we get f of the limit of x of the approaches c of g of x is a. We see that. And eventually, we just get f of a. So the limit of x approaches c, uh, c, the limit is x approaches c of f of g of x is f of a, given that the limit of x approaches c of c of g of x is a. So that's all we have today for limit, and we'll see you tomorrow. This is a pretty advanced looking graph. Not so long. See ya. Bye. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.